During a particularly unhinged episode of The Five, liberal Fox News commentator Jessica Tarlov once again destroyed her four MAGA co-hosts on a variety of issues, this time pertaining to the 2020 election, Kirsten Sinema's recent announcement that she would retire from the Senate, and whether or not Democrats want to destroy political institutions more than Republicans. And it was all glorious. But before we unpack all that, if you end up liking this video and you want to support the channel, please be sure to hit the like, subscribe, and alert bell before you go. I'd greatly appreciate it. All right, friends, uh, I had uh, another video in mind, but I saw these clips and I was like, oh, we got to talk about this because this is one of the best Jessica performances. And again, a particularly unhinged episode of The Five. Got several clips to play. This one's the longest. This one was the most substantive in which Janine Pirro and the MAGA co-hosts on the panel once again did a thing. They engaged in whataboutism and both sidesism and created this false equivalence pertaining to Democrats, Republicans, and using the courts to win elections. We're going to play the clip and unpack it together. To be as democratic as possible, that doesn't mean necessarily that the, the Colorado Supreme Court didn't have a case, right, to consider that their ruling doesn't mean anything. But it, I obviously want people to... Well, clearly there are people who disagree with that. Well, well they had a bench the trial. The, okay. they, I, I understand that the Supreme Court is the highest court in the land. I'm just saying there was a bench trial and then it went to the Supreme Court in Colorado. It was a 4-3 decision there. It wasn't like a unanimous... No. Uh, anyway... But what Jamie Raskin is doing is what the justices asked him to do. They said, this is Congress that makes the decision. So that is what's going to happen. And this argument that Democrats are relying on the courts to win is so bizarre to me, considering what happened in 2020. And I hate to rehash, oh, I don't really hate to rehash this. I love to rehash this. Donald Trump called for recounts everywhere. He got his recounts. Then he continued so to lose. He had over a six. So did Raskin. Stop it. They are not so comparable. Did Gore. There were over So did a lot 60. of Democrats. You're okay. telling me that what Donald yep. Trump and Rudy Giuliani and Sidney Powell and everyone you else is in hate trouble. Them, but the I, okay. It's not about we, hating them. We shan't, we shan't it's about relitigate at the moment. disenfranchising voters. Got it. We shan't litigate which Donald at the Trump moment. Was no, but I want to say effort. one thing. Make it quick. The court just said that Congress has the power to do Is this. Is Jamie Raskin but, but not they, in Congress? But, but wait a minute. We know we can't even get it out of committee. Okay, but, but in addition to that, Section 3 was drafted to ensure an enduring union, not to separate us. And they still need to have the ability to decide whether or not there's been an insurrection. Donald Trump has never been charged nor convicted of insurrection. So we're going to do two things that Neither of which will happen before this thing can even be no, uh, issued. And then I've got important stuff. OK, so there's a lot to unpack there. Obviously, you can probably just see the 10 gazillion things wrong with everything that Janine Pirro said. First off, obviously, the context is the recent Supreme Court decision, which held that Donald Trump cannot be kept off the ballot by individual states. That was a 9-0 decision, at least that particular part. But they punted. They said, listen, if you want to keep insurrectionists off ballots, it's up to Congress to enact some sort of executing legislation. So as we talked about in a previous video, Congressman Jamie Raskin, a Democrat, is calling the Republicans bluff, the Supreme Court's bluff, and saying, OK, then we'll renew legislation to create some sort of process. Now, Janine Pirro says it's never going to make it out of committee. Probably not. But the point is, Jamie Raskin, in an election year, can take this to the American people and say, see, the Supreme Court said it's up to Congress to pass legislation to protect public office from insurrectionists. But Republicans don't want to do that because they know that their guy is an insurrectionist. So it's a political issue. And again, even though we're years out from it, January 6th and insurrection are still bad polling issues for the Republican Party. So Raskin can use it to hurt Republicans politically, and he should. But besides that, note the false equivalence. Again, Republicans always do this. They compare what Donald Trump and the Republican Party did in 2020 when, with Al Gore in 2000, when the margin between Gore and Bush were, were like 500 votes in Florida. And by the way, when the Supreme Court made its decision, what did Gore do? He publicly conceded and gave up. Donald Trump did not do this. Republicans in Congress, in the Senate and the House under Trump, even after January 6th, even after the insurrection, hundreds of them came back and still voted to overturn the results. This is objectively infinitely worse than anything Democrats have ever done, be it Gore in 2000 or Secretary 
uh, excuse me, or Democrats in 2016 after Donald Trump won the election. Nothing like it. No insurrection. No formal objections to uh, the, the outcome of the election. Donald Trump is simply objectively, by far, morally and ethically and legally inferior. There is no contest between these things. But Pirro has to muddy the waters, as most Republicans do. Democrats and Republicans did the same thing. That is a lie. That is a flat-out objective lie. And Pir and Jessica was right to call it out. But then at the end, when Je when Janine Pirro is like, you know, Section Three of the Fourteenth Amendment was designed to bring us all together, unite us, not divide us. Well, Trump also tried to divide us by your logic when he tried to disenfranchise, as Jessica Tarlov points out, 81 million Biden voters. See, again, this is how the Republican brain works. Donald Trump can say the cruelest, most terrible, most divisive things. He can insult blue states, blue cities, Democrats, and MAGA Republicans can do the same thing. We talked about how Marjorie Taylor Greene refers to Democrats as the party of groomers and pedophiles. They can say the most divisive, hateful things, but it's not divisive to Fox News. That's okay. For Republicans to say and do terrible things to Democrats, it's okay to Fox News and Republicans if Republicans want to disenfranchise a majority of voters and steal the results of an election. That's okay. But if Democrats push back at all, that's divisive. It's a disgusting, despicable double standard, which you and I must ruthlessly call out again and again and again, reject the premise. But there's more. So <clears throat> in the aftermath of the Supreme Court decision, Keith Olbermann, a former MSNBC commentator, a guy who's very active on Twitter, said that the United States Supreme Court should be dissolved. And now the five, or four of the five, are saying Keith Olbermann speaks for the Democratic Party. Back for all those who believe that the Always court should be hate. vacated. Yeah. Um, Keith Olbermann does not speak for the party. And yes, yeah, he does. <laughs> okay. And Michael Moore does too, right? We don't see him until every four years and then he comes out and says terrible things about Democrats and then he disappears and then he comes out again. Um, what I'm confused about, and I have been consistent on this, roll the tape, I want Trump on the ballot because you want it to be as democratic as possible. That doesn't mean necessarily that the, the Colorado Supreme Court... So I, again, disagree with Tarlov here. I think that it's perfectly democratic to keep an insurrectionist off a ballot because we don't have a pure democracy in this country. As Republicans very often joyfully tell us, they're like, we live in a republic, not a democracy. They're half right. We live in a constitutional democratic republic, right? And so there are parameters to elections established by the Constitution, and some of these features are anti-democratic. So I can't vote, nor can you. For someone to be president who's 34 years old, that's anti-democratic because the age limit, you have to be at least 35. That's an anti-democratic constitutional measure. You have to be a natural-born citizen. That's an anti-democratic constitutional measure. If you've already been president for two terms, like President Obama or President Bush, you can't vote for them to be president again. That's an anti-democratic constitutional parameter. And it's the same thing with insurrection. So this idea, I disagree with Jessica there. But again, note how Dana Perino is like, yeah, Keith Olbermann speaks for the party. This is what Republicans do. They will pluck this random, relatively random person who doesn't hold a major position. Certainly, they're number one, they're not an elected official. Keith Olbermann's not a Democratic elected official. He's not a leader of the Democratic Party. He's not even like an MSNBC commentator. He's a former MSNBC commentator. And yet they're hanging everything on what he has to say. And Ted Cruz did the same thing recently. He was like, I can't believe the, le the left is coming for the Supreme Court vote Republican in the 2024 election. And as I pointed out, well, Ted, your guy, Donald Trump, called for the termination of the Constitution, which is actually much worse than calling for the dissolution of the Supreme Court, which is still pretty extreme. And so by that logic, you shouldn't be voting for Donald Trump. Your party is, again, just objectively worse. Um, something else I want to point out here, too, in this other clip, um, is uh, Jesse Waters when he's picking on President Biden, um, he makes a mistake that if Biden had made, uh, he would be mocking Biden for it. Tell me if you catch it. Do you ever see these things when he mixed up the president of Mexico and, and the leader of Gaza and Trump put the map on the screen, Mexico run under Israel? So Joe Biden confused the presidents of Mexico and Egypt, not the presidents of Egypt and the leader of Gaza. Jesse Waters just made the same mistake that he's criticizing Biden for. So listen, the, Jessica Tarlov is just, she's amazing in what she does. 
she really is. Um, she has the hardest job in mainstream media, as far as I'm concerned, and she will be missed when she's on maternity leave. But again, this particular episode, the five, in my opinion, was just uniquely unhinged. And I'm glad she pushed back on the false equivalences, the whataboutism, and also pointed out that random commentators on Twitter don't speak for the party, no matter how much Republicans want them to, in order to prop up a straw man. And again, by their own logic, Donald Trump has said far worse about destroying institutions. The Republican Party is just objectively worse on destroying and corroding institutions for their own political aims. Let me know what you think in the comments.